Welcome back. Today, we are going to continue working on our treasure maps and we are going to do more coloring. So I'm gonna color my items today. And so I might use some different colors on here if I want my mountains to be kind of green. I'm gonna use my same fading technique. As they come down, I'm gonna fade them into the land. I might just leave the tops of them white. Um, so on my, let's make that top of this silver. That's my lighthouse. I might want to make a nice bright light coming from there. So I might use like a bright color to show a bright light coming like that. If I want this to be white and if I'm going to be using paint on top of it, then I'm going to have to color it white. So that is a little trick. I can't just leave it right white. I just remembered that, that if I want it to be white, I will have to color it white. So I'm gonna keep my white there so that I don't forget about that. Um, down here, and I can use different shades of different colors. So I'm gonna use a darker, I mean a different color green for that. Now my, this guy is gonna be pretty bright. I'm gonna make him pretty bright. He's gonna have an orange head. He's gonna have blue body and I want him to have whoops, different color green feathers with red that's him and I need to do his beak too so his beak is going to be yellow just like that Trees, on these trees, I'm gonna make them a couple different color greens together so that we can show foliage. I think I need one more color green. This one's pretty dark, yeah. There we go. And I'm gonna give them, that's not dark enough. Let's go with this dark one, just like that. So my pyramids, I want to look kind of sandy. So I'm gonna use this sandy color on one side. And you know like if the sun is shining a specific direction, how something looks way darker on the other side? I'm gonna use this darker brown on the other side to show some depth. Okay, so you can see I finished coloring everything. Um, I tried to use different shades of greens and browns. I mixed some colors. I also did some shading where I added, like, I wanted this to look more like mountains and dirt, so I added different colors of brown and a little bit of black by pressing lightly, like we talked about, um, and different shades there. On this one, I added some details just with the crayon. I also added a little shading where those overlap. We already talked about how to do the shading there. And I added well, anything that's white, I colored white because I am gonna be painting over these. So I went ahead and colored all of that. And then on this one, I colored the things that are white, white because then I could see them on this paper. And so I colored everything on here and I did a little different technique, mixing blue and white and making straighter lines in order to make it look like it's a frozen lake. And so though, those are all done as far as the coloring goes. We're gonna talk tomorrow about the next part. So until then, have fun coloring. So for painting, I'm using these watercolors. These are the ones I have at home. I don't have the other ones here, so I'm just gonna use these, but they all pretty much work the same. You get your brush wet, you get the color that you want. I just want a nice brown. And you make a little pool of color, you don't scoop. And then you just paint right over it. What's gonna happen is anywhere where you don't have any water, I mean any crayon, it's gonna go into that area. It's also gonna go into the cracks, which is why the main reason why we went ahead and did the um, crumpling first. 
so that it would create all these nice little cracks for the paint to go in. You don't want to press too hard because your paper is already very soft and weak because you have crumpled it. But notice I colored the white things. All my white things are still standing out. And this is just to make it look old. If you wanted to do a mixture of brown and yellow, that would work too. That's going to give you more of a old look as well. Just make sure you're keeping your paint really wet. It's I'm going back to the water every time. So I'm not really wanting that much paint. I am really just wanting to get a little bit of brown on there so that it really starts to look old. That's the whole idea. You especially wanna get those edges because we left them plain on purpose. That's why we fade it out. Just like that. That is the one with the water as the main area. I'm gonna let that dry. While that one's drying, I'm gonna paint the other one. This one I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I do a little mixture of yellow and brown. So I'm gonna get a lot of water and I'm gonna start out with yellow. I'm gonna just get some yellow on there really carefully, then I might go into the brown. Mix that together. A little of the yellow down here. Lots of water. A little bit of the brown. Lots of water. I could use just plain water right through here because I got a, got a lot of color on there. If you want to pick them both at the same time, pick yellow first and then brown because yellow is lighter. If you go ahead and put the brown in first and then stick it in the yellow, it's gonna turn your yellow brown. But since brown is darker, if you wanna pick up the yellow first, you can and go right in there. It's not gonna contaminate the color quite as much. It will be easier to clean off. Yellow first, then brown. Lots of water. Water's the main thing in here. Not scooping paint, just getting little areas of my brush wet, making little pools of color. And you're gonna have to let it dry. Oh, my edges didn't get unfolded there from the wrinkles. A very old, old treasure map. See, I contaminated my yellow. I gotta clean that out. A little bit more brown. There we go. And I have a nice treasure map that looks old. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Had fun making your creative treasure maps.